as I said yesterday, I'm only technically a doctor, so we're going to let a real sports physician handle the fantasy football injuries. Yesterday's video, we talked with Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors all about the injured running backs coming into this year, Akers, Dobbins, etc. So make sure that you go watch that video first. We will link it down in the description. Today, we're going over all the pass catchers, wide receivers, the Michael Thomases, the tight ends, the George Kittles, Irv Smith, things like that. We're sitting down with Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors. Make sure you go follow him on Twitter. Make sure you subscribe to the Fantasy Doctors YouTube channel. And more importantly, make sure you subscribe to our channel because we'll be ripping off videos like this all August, helping you prepare for your fantasy football drafts. If you never want to watch another fantasy football video, but you want to be prepared for your season long draft, what I would suggest is you take a deep breath, you tuck your shirt in, and you head over to Prize Picks. Because if you go to Prize Picks and you use our promo code BGE, when you deposit $10 on there, not only are they going to give you a 100% deposit match to nail these preseason parlay games, but you're getting our season-long draft guide. All of the work that we do for the last three or four months here on this channel go into a nice, neatly organized, packed draft guide for you. Everything that you need to prep for your fantasy football drafts, you get it for free if you go deposit on prize picks using promo code B. D-G-E. You'll get an email from us approximately 24 hours later with access to the website. And again, we're going to be nailing prize picks props all season long. So make sure you just get on the website regardless of even if you don't want the fucking draft guide. And if you're not in a state that's eligible for prize picks, you could still cop it at bdge.co forward slash products. All right. Y'all know what we got to do. The shirt's already tucked because I filmed yesterday's intro about five seconds ago. So we stay tucked. Make sure you flex your fucking traps and we stop yelling. All right, we are Mike with Dr. Morse. If you missed yesterday's episode, we went through some of the top running backs that we are a little bit concerned about and some not so concerned about going into the fantasy football season. We did a great job breaking down the science and whether or not you should be, you know, avoiding them or drafting them, whatever, in your fantasy drafts. That'll be linked down below. Go watch that shit first. And again, make sure you are subscribed to the Fantasy Doctors YouTube channel. Dr. Jesse Morse, let's talk about Michael Thomas. I would list his injury history, but I'm going to be honest. I don't even know what the fuck he's dealing with. I feel like he's had a low ankle sprain for two years. So maybe you can give us more insight on what we're dealing with. It feels like we're going in a positive direction with Michael Thomas, but I, I really don't, I don't even know what to make of the situation at this point. Yeah. Um, this has been uh, a shit show from the beginning, unfortunately. So we'll, we'll start from what we know at the beginning, uh, September 13th, 2020. It's almost two years ago, right? Left high ankle sprain confirmed by Dr. Robert Anderson, who's the main ortho that does almost everybody's foot and ankle. He's the team doc for the Packers. Normally that takes about three to four weeks. He missed four weeks. Okay. He strains his hamstring in his rehab misses in it. So they'd be like, Oh, well he would have came back from his ankle, but he's trained his hamstrings. So he's going to miss two more games. Then somehow he injures, not the high ankle, which is the, the top middle part, but the inside ankle, the inner ankle. Now this is not a common injury. Okay. The only two times that I can think of this happened recently. One was when Dak tore his ankle up cause he fractured, dislocated it, which makes sense. The other time is when crazy Antonio Brown last year, when he really injured his ankle and, and, and it was like, oh, is he injured? He's throwing his shirt, whatever. He had a, a bad medial ankle. So they're not common in their bad, like bad dad. So the problem with a medial ankle is this ligament on here is so strong that we almost never worry about it tearing. That's why everybody rolls their lateral ankle and that's why everybody rolls their ankle in basketball and whatever. The problem is if you injure this, it's not mild. It's always severe. So you can rehab it, but it usually doesn't rehab very well. So oftentimes you have to repair this. The problem was he didn't want to have a repair because that would have been his season. So he tries to play through it. I think he played in a, a game or two that year. Then he goes to the, not the team doc, a, a doc, we don't know who it was, in the offseason. They're like, eh, it doesn't look that bad. Let's try to rehab it. So he does. How does the doctor, like, how do you, how does this guy do, like, say that when it feels like the, it's so fucking obvious? Uh, that's, you know, that's the question. So now he's pushing through a significant ankle injury, continuing to, and uh, I'm assuming he's doing rehab. And then he's developing new injuries, right? Because that one's unstable and it hasn't been repaired. Right. Then he shows up to, to OTAs or whatever. I think it was OTAs to the Saints. And they're like, bro, your ankle's awful. Like this needs to be repaired. 
The problem is this is a four to six month recovery. This isn't exactly a quick surgery. So that's almost November. He suffers a setback, which is not uncommon. There's your 21. So just like that, a simple ankle injury turns into a nightmare. I've heard rumblings. He had a second surgery. I haven't been able to confirm it, so I don't know if it's true. But now he's starting to run routes. And we saw early on he was not exactly comfortable putting a lot of stress on that left ankle, turning to the, uh, you know, if you're running, if you're running on the left ankle and you're trying to avoid the inside, you're, you know, you're going to cut certain ways and you're going to basically round out your routes. Because if, if you're trying to be cut, you're going to cut on a dime. Well, mm -hmm. you can't do that if that ligament's weak or not happy. So you're going to kind of, kind of like do this. So you saw some of that early, but he was getting better. My concern for him was, can he do it every day? Can he do it 50 times in, you know, three hours or whatever it is? And the question was, can the ankle hold up? I still think he might have some injuries that in that ankle that may never look the same. Can he still be a top 10 guy? Potentially, yeah. The situation has to be perfect, and I don't know if it is. I have concerns about his ability to maintain the integrity of that ankle long term. He's starting to look a lot better. He was rounding some of his routes today on a video that dropped this morning. But overall, given context, he's looked much better. So I'm not super concerned about him, depending on his cost. If he was a third round pick, no. If he's a seventh, eighth round pick, yes. But I do have some concerns about this because of the severity of that ankle. So you, he, he'll he be ready for week one. I do, unless he severs a setback. I, I, I firmly believe he will be ready for week one and he'll look pretty good. Okay. Okay, good to know. Mid-season yeah, might be a different story. Yeah, I, I think what will happen is we'll see more videos like that continue to roll out, and he'll go from eighth round to seventh round, sixth round, and he'll probably yeah. settle in that like mid-fifth round. At that point, he becomes a little bit risky, and I just feel like you know where there's smoke, there's fire, and there's just been too much nonsense with him for too long that I don't really want to waste a premium pick there. There's a lot of turnover there in, in New Orleans as well, like new quarterback obviously with Jameis. Chris Olave is an awesome outside route runner, so I think he gets a lot of the deep balls that might have yep. otherwise gone to him. I don't know. The offense is weird. It's a little bit too risky. I agree. Seventh, eighth round, I'm definitely in on as long as he's on the field. But after that, it gets a little, uh, it gets a little mucky if it, if it starts to go earlier than that. Someone I am weirdly in on, despite everything that we've talked about for like the last week or so, is Chris Godwin, knowing that he'll be a player over the second half of the year when he's back on the field. He's going to be really good. He's going to be attached to Brady, mm -hmm. but he's also coming off an ACL and MCL tear in week 15. So we're talking about a, a really, really late season tear here. And that does not give his timetable to return like any leeway here. And he they didn't put him on the, uh, the PUP to start training camp or yep. whatever, but that doesn't necessarily really mean anything, I don't think, right now. I think there's still a chance he doesn't you know, play week one, week two. And I don't think it's realistic to expect him to be a hundred percent until like week six, seven, eight, you know, maybe not even before then. Yep. Um, so Godwin, I just feel like straight up, you just know that you're not getting Chris Godwin until the second half of the year, but you might get like Chris Godwin, Chris Godwin, the second half of the year. And that's kind of like the way I'm looking at it. So are you concerned about the timetable for him? If he is on the field, like early on that he's getting on the field too early. There is a little bit of that. Uh, but he did tear his ACL MCL, but he didn't repair it for about 10 days. Excuse me. Almost two weeks. Yeah. Um, Dr. James Andrews did it. Famous orthopedic surgeon, uh, uh Alabama, Northwest Florida. The first week of January is So you're looking at not because we don't start with zero months. So nine months is actually October, mm -hmm. but if he's relatively ready in, 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 in week one or week two, I wouldn't be surprised if they clear him, give him a couple weeks to clear the cobwebs, get some confidence back, which is, as we know, the hardest part. I'm not super concerned about Godwin. There is a chance he's ready for week one. He hasn't reportedly been fully cleared yet. He hasn't, which doesn't surprise me. So, and I'm okay with it. We know Evans is a beast. We know that Gronk is gone. We know that Julio is there. I'm not super worried about Julio. Uh, Gage, I do like, but I think Godwin is a beast. And I think that... Uh, he's a slam dunk if he's in the fifth or sixth round. You start getting the third round, I think it's a little riskier. Yeah, I, th and, and, I think and going back to MT, I would say A Rob over MT. Give me Robinson or Offrey around the same time Hell because yeah. they're going. I'm like, all right, come on. I'll yeah, those that. those two will separate a little bit as the summer goes on. I'm I'm getting I'm really high on Allen Robinson. I think um I think with this situation here, 
Chris Godwin, I think he'll stay in the fifth, sixth round. I don't, I, he doesn't feel like someone because everyone's like, everyone knows what his injury is and knows his timetable that he's going to rise much higher. He's someone that it feels kind of like a luxury pick, but he's someone that I'm like really okay investing in because you know, come playoff time, like your, your fantasy team is going to be riding fucking high with him in your lineup. So good to hear that the Godwin concern isn't too, too high. We have a couple of other veterans also tearing their ACL. It was a crazy year. At the end of the year, it was just these older dudes tearing their their ACLs like week 15, 16, 17. So you have Mike Gallup, uh, Michael Gallup tears his ACL week 17. You have Robert Woods who tore his ACL in week nine, but Robert Woods is older. Obviously, he's 30 years old. Uh, Michael Gallup is just 26 years old. They gave him a new contract. So he is like kind of slotted in as that wide receiver too in Dallas with Amari Cooper gone. And I'm curious on, I mean, Gallup's already come out and said week one is not reasonable. So it's like, if you know that most players at this point are always like, oh, you know, I might be back week one. Let's see. Let's not put like timetables on it. Someone coming out this early already and being like week one's not even reasonable. That gives me a lot of pause. And I don't know if Gallup was necessarily a guy that I was going to be investing into anyways. This is a very late tear, right? Week 17. So you're talking about like 12 months puts him at the end of this fucking season. It's more so looking at again, what we talked about yesterday, like more targets for Zeke and the running backs. I really like the rookie Jalen Tolbert. So I think he's going to eat. See, this gives you another reason to love CeeDee Lamb going over 100 catches that you could get on every fucking website right now on the over. So it's like, if we don't have a lot of confidence in Michael Gallup, that should just make us want to invest in these other pass catchers to a crazy degree, right? Yeah. I mean, so Gallup's had a bunch of injuries uh, dating back to 2015. He actually sprained his, his MCL in 2019. We don't know which side. Uh, he then uh, tore his left, obviously, ACL and MCL. Uh, but here's the problem. When he tore the MCL on that left knee in the first week of, of um, January, almost the day before Godwin, Godwin had his surgery, uh, Gallup tore his. The problem was when you have a grade two that's such an unstable injury. It doesn't have to be repaired, but you have to wait for that to heal at least a couple of weeks to a month before you can repair the ACL. Because if right. you don't, you're not going to be stable. And then you're going to increase the risk of tearing the ACL again, the new the new graft. So he actually didn't have his surgery for over a month. So you can't say, oh, he had it in January. He actually had it in on, on February 7th. So you push it down another month, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Dr. Cooper, the, the team doc for the the, um, the Cowboys did it. So that, you know, you're looking at mid to late October, assuming no setbacks. I was a little surprised they extended him so quickly. Uh, Same. I mean... I know the felt kind of like a des- a little bit like a desperation move. They knew Cooper was on his way out, and they had nothing on the depth chart behind fucking CD Lamb. Yeah, I mean, and and now they're really, I mean, now because they just lost Washington for a while, so they're like, I don't know who. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's not a run out of people to throw to. But I mean, uh, I have I have concerns about Gallup. Uh, I, there's a possibility he doesn't return till November, uh, and OBJ is even after him. People asking about him, like, no, he's way late. Yeah. No. Um. So it's like. I, if you're getting tall- Gallup, like you better hope, like you you may play him for three, four weeks if you're lucky before playoffs start. Like maybe. Like yeah, I don't even. Feel, I feel like he's not even worth targeting because like even even when he's healthy, he's been wildly inconsistent as a fantasy yeah. player. He's felt yeah. like more of a deep threat. So I don't I don't think they'll rush him back because they gave him that long term contract. So it feels a little bit weird if they were trying to you know push him and ruin another fucking season. Uh, of his so Gallup's probably off my board Robert Woods though I mean listen typically he would have been off this is like a a very normal situation for me to be like I'm just not getting involved with this a late ACL tear a 30 year old guy moving over to a run heavy team but most of the beat reporters out there assume that he's gonna take over the wide receiver one role Traylon Burks Mm -hmm. had like a rocky start to the offseason mini camp and everything, asthma and just not performing well and et cetera. There's been a little bit of positivity from his camp uh, recently. But Robert Woods, like how, how do you I mean, I, I guess like the only way you look at it is he's a little bit older. So the recovery is going to be a little bit maybe longer. But Robert Woods, like how confident do you feel drafting him? I know he's a boring play, but at this point, if he's going to be on the field, like they don't really have anyone to throw to there in Tennessee. Amen. Uh, so one of the things that I do in, 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 in our draft guide is I give a risk score, almost like a credit score, I guess, for each player based on their injury history and based on my experience as a sports medicine doc that treats NFL guys. And it kind of gives you an idea on zero to 10, where is your risk score for this player? So I basically did it for almost every player that you're going to draft. 
Um, and, and each one reflects on where he's at now. So in general, uh, I'm not super concerned about Bobby Trees. He did have it earlier. Uh, he had it in November. He is a true professional. He's been a stud for years. Remember, he was, uh, you know, he started with Buffalo, went to the Rams. Uh, so, yeah, no other injuries that he confirmed. Excuse me. The, uh, but he did miss eight games. But that was in early November. So we're already good. He should be cleared. Like, I, you know, I'm not overly worried about him. And when you look at, at overall his uh, evaluation, he was supposed to be a monster last year and he had monster games um or you know for for the rams i he could easily be a top 25 play in ppr but i don't think he's no that's not his price and, and most people are like ah he's a you know but he's not a big drop in my opinion from aj brown's production uh, maybe call me crazy but i don't you know i don't see it and, and 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 while Traylon is a freak, I do have some concerns about him, at least in his rookie season. So I think they will definitely hit uh, Bobby Trees and Hooper a little bit more than people are expecting. And they're going to be like, damn, why didn't I target him? So, you know, in general, I think that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Uh, to give you, I'm going to pull up my risk growth for, for Cooks, uh, Woods, I mean, sorry. 5.5 out of 10. So I basically did give him a relatively higher score, but that's baked into his cost. If he was a first round pick, obviously that's risky. Yeah. But as a, you know, as a whatever, whatever round he's going in now, I don't mind him. I don't mind him at all. Yeah. We haven't got a lot on Woods in terms of reports and like what's going on there in Tennessee. So it feels like, you know, he's kind of slowly coming back. He'll slide back into the wide receiver one role. Like they signed him to be that for a reason. Um, so he's someone like, like you said, he could be a top 25 guy. I don't see like a ceiling really there because he's not an explosive yeah. downfield playmaker, but he's yeah. someone who could like, you know, he could end up getting eight targets a game from Ryan Tannehill and, and consistently put up five for 60 and then score a touchdown every other game or something. And that'll land you in that like Hunter Renfro zone where you end up finishing, you know, pretty highly and you're a good PPR play, good half PPR play. And I just feel like the, everything in that Tennessee offense is going to be condensed to yeah. Derrick Henry and like one or two passing targets. And yeah, I'm worried about Traylon Burks rookie year as well. Um, so I think that's just kind of more more to add on to for Robert Woods. So it'll be interesting to see how that year plays out in, in Tennessee overall. Um, George Kittle. I I'm I'm kind of equally as nervous about George Kittle's like injury history as I am Trey Lance being the quarterback in San Fran. And not because I think he's a good or bad thrower of the ball. But they're already one of the slowest and run heaviest teams in the NFL. And now you're adding a quarterback who's going to add 10 carries per game to whatever offensive scheme they already had going. So now it's like, listen, if Trey Lance throws the ball 28, 30 times a game, that's not a lot of targets. Assuming they're all catchable, it's not a lot of like targets and receptions to go around for this team. And now you have George. It's been four years since George Kittle's been, you know, that record breaking George Kittle. And they've added legit weapons on that offense the running backs Ayuk and Debo obviously so his volume is like one of my concerns and his consistency which is shown even when he's healthy but he's dealt with calf strain foot fracture MCL sprain hamstring sprain knee sprain and it kind of feels like what we were talking about with C-Mac yesterday where it's like maybe none of these in particular are overly concerning but the whole picture being painted seems a little bit messy how, how do we feel about Kittle in, in terms of his health Kittle's one of those freaks where you want you love to watch him play you just don't know like how risky he's going to be he is high risk for me but there's only so many guys in that, that that have his level of potential so it's like if you're in a te premium league you could justify still taking him as a top five tight end but he definitely has some risk no question about that i went i did a deep dive in the injury draft guide for him because of his injury history and his injury history is ridiculous if you want that um, for uh, for Nick's specific uh, viewers, I created a code BDGE uh, at tfdinjurydraftguide.com that gets you ten dollars off, which is if you know taking it from twenty five to fifteen. That it, it should it's a it's an incredible deal, and it's will fill all of your injury concerns, and it has a whole lot more in it. Kittle has in increased injury risk. He gets the weirdest injuries. Uh, a, a super rare uh, fracture in his foot 
that I don't even know how he did. He landed funny on it. That was rare. He that was six games back in 2020. Then he strains his calf uh, early in 2021. It lingered pretty much all season, but he only missed three games. So he already had lower body injury earlier in the OTAs that missed time. I shared your concerns about Trey Lance's ability and at least of throwing uh, volume. I love his potential. Uh, but I don't know what to make of it pass catcher wise. You have Ayuk, you have Debo. I'm assuming they're going to add some random people as well. I love Kittle's talent. I have an issue with his injury history and I have an issue with his volume. You might be better off taking someone like Schultz, at least in my opinion, or waiting a little bit and, and, and you know, getting someone else in his pick range and, and, and waiting on a, a tight end with potentially higher upside at a cheaper cost. Where do you have Kittle ranked in your tight end rankings? I have, I think I have him as five. So it's obviously like the big four guys, you know, uh, Kelsey Andrews, Pitts. Well, I have Waller ahead of Kittle. I have Kittle at five, but again, like I'm not based on where people are getting drafted. There's a good chance that I end up with zero Kittle, and I have Schultz. I have. Hawkins and Goddard, Knox, any of those guys. So I actually have him as three. I keep going back and forth on him. You have him over uh, I do like Ertz, uh, so I might need to keep bringing him up. Um, for what it's worth, Kittle has the highest risk score of the top 15 <laughs> tight ends, for what it's worth, to give you an idea. Uh, there's so many guys that I like, I just can't figure out where to put him. Is Waller going to get the volume? Is Hawkinson going to stay healthy and get volume? It's a really tough uh, year for tight ends. Yeah. You know, Doc Goddard, I love Ertz, but when Nuke comes back, what happens? Schultz, is he going to get the volume what we're hoping he's getting? Pitts, generational talent, what happens with him? Does Mariota even function? Yeah. Uh, like, you know, Kelsey, is he eventually going to hit his decline? He's 32. Uh, that's like, you know, uh, uh, that makes Tom Brady look young, but still that's that's really old for a tight end. Yeah. He's literally 11 years older than Kit uh, than than Pitts. Like think about that. This has been uh, one so of the hardest Andrews, tight end you know, years to decipher. This is is you know, a really, I love really tough year. You know, I love Irv Smith, but then he gets injured today and, and, and injures his thumb. He's out for potentially the whole month of freaking October uh, August. So I'm like, yeah, tight end is crazy. Yeah, tight end's wild. And speaking of Irv Smith, he was the last guy we were going to cover today. And it wasn't even due to the injury that he had today, obviously. He was on this list prior to that. Because in the same vein where we were waiting for Zach Ertz to leave, for Goddard to break out, it felt like we were waiting for Kyle Rudolph to leave, mm -hmm. for Irv Smith to break out, finally got the runway clear, and then one of the legs of the plane just fucking flies off. So he tears his meniscus last year which wasn't like an overly concerning injury i feel like at the time like the reports went crazy and then all of a sudden it was like never mind he's out for like f for fucking ever um yeah. and i think the return timetable was not as significant as like one of these bigger injuries maybe like four to six months so it felt like as soon as the offseason right. hit like he was pretty much good to go and it felt like it wasn't one of those uh and again correct me if i'm wrong obviously but it's not like the acl where we like it two years removed it's like once he's good from this six month period we're like pretty okay drafting this dude and feel like he's back to 100 percent. but now he i believe what do you have surgery on his thumb today I it's not, we don't have any details at least i had none that i've seen okay so well, let, let's talk about like the yeah let's talk about the knee first yeah so there's been a change of philosophy over the t past 10 years in ortho surgery and they used to pretty much any type of meniscal injury they would just take out that portion of the meniscus and they would just let him return in two three weeks well Todd Gurley rolled around and tore his ACL and had a significant meniscal injury reportedly. And they took out a ton of his meniscus and we saw him fall off a cliff like we've never seen. And that was because of his meniscus. In my opinion, he had so much arthritis that his knee just couldn't tolerate it. Yeah. The more the data shows, if you remove a lot of meniscus, that knee is never the same. So when you have a bad meniscal tear, say one that is like a piece of paper that instead of uh, being here, now you're like literally like this and it's just flapping and, and whatnot. You have to repair that, literally suture it. Well, you can't suture that and go back in a month. That's a six plus month injury if everything goes perfect. The good news is once it heals, it's usually good. Uh, if it doesn't heal, that's a separate discussion. He was due for a breakout last year and I'm hoping for it this year, but obviously this new thumb injury concerns me a little bit. I just feel like this poor kid can't catch a break. They have new coaching, like they have new potential here. I love it. But now like, what do we, you know, what do we, what's going on? Like, we don't know, but I do like him this year. I don't really have any concerns about the knee. I do have concerns about his overall health because he keeps getting injured. 
and that's why he's increased injury risk. But I love his upside and, and smash potential. Yeah, I mean, he's dealt with his own his own share of injuries. Yeah, like you said, groin strain. We got back injury. We got the meniscus tear. Now we got the thumb injury. So it's like we want to be on the field, but the more these things keep popping up as the summer goes on, it's like the less I feel. He was someone that that I'd like to get as the tight end eleven or tight end twelve in drafts, which means I'd be okay with him as my tight end one. This makes me a little bit less comfortable. It makes me feel like I want to get somebody earlier in that like Dawson Knox range, then grab Irv Smith at tight end 15, 16, hoping that he breaks out as the year goes by. We get more comfortable with the Kevin O'Connell offense, knowing that they're going to be more pass heavy. They're going to be more versatile, all that kind of shit, and then feel good with him. But as it stands right now, I'm a little bit concerned about owning him as like my tight end one right now. This year, I'm, I mean, I'm concerned about owning fucking everybody on this list as my tight end one because I don't, I don't feel confident in anybody. But that's the way fantasy football works, I guess. We thought this year was going to be deep. Every year it's we think deep, it's but be everybody's deep. still unstable. I feel like this is what it is every year. It's a fucking bag of Lay's potato chips, man. You pop it open, you get excited, and then all of a sudden your hands in the bottom of the fucking bag without anything to show <laughs> all for the it, crumbles. Man. You're like, yeah, it's bullshit. Trying to put one together. It's Irv Smith's ligaments <laughs> at the bottom of that fucking bag. All right, uh, that's the last of the pass catchers that we were going to talk about today. But uh, y'all can feel free to drop any players that you are interested in, you know, knowing more about in the comment section. Also, they cover everything on their YouTube channel, the Fantasy Doctors YouTube channel. Also, Link, they do real-time injury updates on there. No one's working harder than these guys in the industry. I can promise you that. Uh, one of the best resources you could possibly have in your bag when it comes to fantasy football. Go cop the draft guide. Go follow dr jesse morse on twitter all the good stuff that you hear at the end of youtube videos it will be linked in the description down below subscribe to our channel hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed and we shall see y'all tomorrow love you